Sandin Stolly. You're a former world number two doubles player and a world number 50 singles player, US Open doubles champion and Australian Davis Cup representative. You are now Tennis Australia's National Development Squad coach for South Australia. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today at Inspired by Headquarters. Nice to be here, looking forward to the interview. Going back to your childhood, Sandon, what were the highlights that helped you choose tennis as a career choice? Well, I think it was my family. Um, I was born into a sport that my father um, was really good at. He um, was a world number one uh, champion and I had two older sisters that um, were around the sport a lot. And I think that encouraged me to um, spend a lot of time on the tennis court and, and uh, it was something that I found a lot of passion in when I was a bit younger. So um, to achieve the, the and went on in, in my career to achieve the things that I did was, a, was something that, um, you know, for, for me and, and my family was something that everyone's pretty proud of. With that, I had a lot of support, uh, you know, with, with definitely with, with my father, um, a lot of support and he never really pushed me into the sport of tennis. Um, I think it was really important that uh, all my sisters and myself played a lot of different sports when we were a bit younger, but I think uh, it was just the support that I had from the family and, and from all my coaches and, and that over my journey that it really became the champion that I did in the sport of tennis. How hard was it to become a tennis pro at 21 years of age? Uh, a lot of hard work, um, you know, as a, as a child a little bit, you have to make some sacrifices. I think one of the things I always took away from, from dad and in the, in the talks that I had with dad was at that younger age, um, I had to treat it like a job. Sometimes friends were going off and doing some other things and I was away playing tournaments or training um, because I wanted to become the best I could possibly be as a tennis player. So through that journey, I went to school like everyone else and I did a couple of years of university. And then uh, that's when I decided to, to take it on professionally and, and make a career out of it because I, in that early stage, I wasn't maybe a, a great junior at that time, but uh, over, over the journey of a couple of years and going to university, the extra hard work that I put into myself on the tennis court and, and, and I guess my, um, my confidence grew in that time and um, I realized that I, that I could compete with some of the best uh, international players in the world and that's when um, I felt like I made the made all the opportunities count when I had when I had them and um, that's where my pro career started and, and so it was a good transition from juniors to seniors. I watched a part the appropriate parts of the untold tennis documentary on Netflix and mm -hmm. it really shows how hard you've got to train you can't stay up late have a party the night before you go to Wimbledon or anything <laughs> I traveled with a really good group of other young Australian um, players like Pat Rafter and even traveled a little bit with Leighton Hewitt when he came on. And we just had a really good um, mateship as well. But we had to play one another sometimes in tournaments and you just have to separate that mateship and go out and compete and, and play as hard as you could and put the mateship aside. And, and then at the, at the end of it, you know, there was always one winner and one loser. And, you still ended up being mates at the end of it all. What do you prefer most, singles or doubles? <laughs> Good question. I, I probably, I probably love the, the doubles, as I said. I, I loved having a, a teammate by my side. And in doubles, it was an opportunity to play mixed doubles, which they do at um, the Grand Slam. So that was an opportunity to, to um, play with some really good girls uh, that you know, I got to play with. Like I played with Alicia Mollick who you know, was our Billie Jean King um, captain at the moment currently and, and played with some really good girls in that time. So that was fun as well. How rigorous was your weekly routine to achieve the status you reached? It was busy. Um, it was especially, uh, probably give you an example of, of my week when I went away to an, a tennis academy where it was, it was pretty much five days a week and then I'd go play tournaments on the weekend, but I woke up at uh, 7.30, I went to school from 7.30 to 9.30, um, so only two hours, and then I went and trained from 9.30 to 12.30, had a bit of lunch, and then went back out on the court and trained from 2.30 to about, oh, about 4.30, and then went back to school from about 5 to 8, and that was my day. 
So it was a long day every, and it was pretty much, that's when really in that development time for me, when I was 15, 16, that was probably the most development in those two years that I had, because it was just, it was very rigorous, as you said. And wow, that's a very full on day. Really important to get as much sleep as you can, especially at a young age. I'm always encouraging all the kids that I work with now to make sure that they're not staying up on their devices all night and, and uh, that they get sleep for the next day um, because we all need our rest. What sacrifices have you made to pursue your dream? I missed a sister's wedding. <laughs> that was a big one. Sister wasn't too happy that I missed a wedding, but at that time I was at uni and uh, we'd made the final of um, a big tournament and I felt like, well, um, I do have my sister's wedding, but I felt like I couldn't let down my teammates. To me, there, there, there weren't a lot of sacrifices in it because I, I think it was something that um, I was able to do. And, and uh, it was an opportunity to, uh, as I said, to see the world and to play a sport that I love. Could you describe the people who have inspired you along the way? I know my father has inspired me, uh, just just being around him and um, his work, his work ethic, and, and, and the values that he's that he's put in, instilled in me, uh, both on the court and I guess as a man, um, and probably the mentor that I had that I spoke to you about when that weekly schedule was a man by the name of Harry Hopman, and uh, Harry Hopman was our first Davis Cup coach, uh, and he he coached my father, he coached a lot of um, a lot of that generation uh, back in back in the 60s and 70s. And um, I was very fortunate. That's, that's who uh, I went to Harry Hopman's academy. He, he moved um, his academy from Australia over to Florida. And so I got to train under Harry for almost two years. And he was someone that, uh, as far as a mentor and um, from the tennis and also just on life, he was someone that uh, I know my dad really respected and it was someone that I really respected at that time. Uh, I think it was uh, something that really pushed me to, to, I guess, dare to dream to become a tennis player. Um, and, uh, and I think he had the confidence in me. Um, but it, as you said, a lot of sacrifices and hard work you got to put into it to, to get there. Your father, Fred Stolle, and yourself are the first father and son to have ever won at Grand Slam level and also to represent and compete at the Australian Davis Cup. Yeah, it was a very proud moment for, for I guess, the Stolle family and especially for my father, Fred, who um, had a lot of success at Grand Slam level and, and also uh, for us, the pinnacle to represent Australia at Davis Cup level. Um, for me to, to get that opportunity was something that uh, for us as a family, it was a very um, big achievement and a very proud moment for the sport. Has it been worthwhile? <laughs> well, I'm sitting here getting to talk to you today, so that's worthwhile, isn't it? The, <laughs> the journey continues. Um, no, it has. It's, as I said, I had some amazing opportunities and uh, got to, to, be, to meet some amazing people along the journey and to, to see parts of uh, the world and experience different things, so for me it's, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't change it at all. Meeting my wife and all those life things that I've gotten to experience have been fantastic. So it's been, uh, been a great journey and it continues on. How difficult was it to make the transition back to normal life? I think part of, part of me stopping being a professional, my body uh, sort of didn't handle it too well. I started to get a lot of injuries and uh, that sort of took its toll. And then the traveling aspect of it, I was, I was traveling internationally for 15 years. So I just got tired of the traveling and, and really uh, wanted to really sit, sit down and be somewhere for a period of time and spend some time with family and friends. That part of it was, was, was easy for me. Uh, I think maybe the competing I missed a little bit at the start. Uh, that I, you know, I didn't have that competition that, and that outlet because as sportsmen competing is you, you have to be a strong competitor. Uh, the will to, to want to win and, the, and to compete is, um, with any professional athlete is, is probably why we do it. So that part of it I did miss probably a little bit at the start, but uh, now um, I probably, from being a coach, I love watching the kids that I coach 
compete. So that probably has become my outlet a little bit more now, um, post my, my own career. What does your role in as Tennis Australia's National Development Squad coach involve? It's a lot of programs um, and, and really trying to create opportunities for, for all the kids in the state. The way we're structured now is to, to really try and help the coaches out there as well. We, you know, we've set up some things regionally as well, so to make sure that there's some really strong kids out in the region, which we know there are. We make sure we try and do some development things for them in the state as well. So it's really working with a lot of coaches, working with a lot of kids and, and making sure that the development of where they are trying to get to in their tennis is something that we can add value to. It'd be pretty crazy being trained by one of the most famous tennis players in the world. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, sometimes if they haven't done their research, they probably don't know, you know, who, really? I, who, who, I, who I am, but that's okay. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> not really what I've what I've done in my career it's more can I make an impact on on all those kids that do come out to the squad and, and train with me when I'm out there what advice can you give to budding tennis players at local district level in the age group to progress up the ladder with an aim of achieving professional level oh, that's a good question um, as I mentioned before there's a lot of pathways that we have in our sport I think really at a young age I, I love uh, a lot of kids playing a lot of different sport. I think uh, it really helps um, with one coordination and, and discipline in other sports. And so I think it's really important for, for them to stay involved in a lot, of, a lot of sports, especially some team sports. I think at the start of their development, it's good for them to be part of a team. And uh, so I think that's a really important message that I try and push out there to a lot of coaches as well as parents and, and kids. Our sport is a fun sport and, and, and really try and get them to understand those sacrifices do have a, a lining that is really exciting for them um, to aspire to become Grand Slam champions or to, to get to that pro level. Um, I think the, the person that has been really inspirational for young girls in the last 12 months is, is Ash Barty. I mean, Ash Barty's story is, 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 is one of and she talks about it dare to dream remember she was she was talking about well i i did dream of winning wimbledon you know one one day and this year you know she she went out and she won wimbledon and was like wow all my dreams have just come come true i've won wimbledon and uh you know something that probably a lot of young kids at that time they dared to dream of what they want to become and she and she did it and she fulfilled that dream which is something for her amazing and she got so famous for it that veggie might change their name that's right yeah be a great ambassador for, for veggie might yeah <laughs> i think that one tasted better than the regular one in my opinion for parents of children interested what advice would you give to help their child pursue their dream my advice would be that as, as i spoke about the journey uh pretty long journey and got to have a bit of patience um, i think from the parents point of view too is the, the sacrifices of any elite sportsman to to get them to training and to get them to tournaments and is it a big commitment I think really important to educate their, their kids that um, if they're going to be committed uh, the parents are going to be committed but yes the, the, the child or the athlete has to be committed the big one for me is making sure that the, the, the kid is, is loving what they're doing and, and loving the training and loving the environment they're in. Is it still a disadvantage living in regional areas to obtain access to tennis programs in Australia? Tennis Australia now have addressed that a little bit. I know um, part of my role is to get out in the region and, and discover those, those young talented uh, athletes and to try and do more. So we've put in, uh, in regards to the pathways, we've put in um, some what we call our regional regional development squads. So it's an opportunity that uh, the better kids in those particular regions can come together and train together. We've invited a lot of the regional kids to come into Adelaide to access uh, 
you know, a couple of days of training in, in Adelaide. Parents who may be time poor trying to survive, are there support programs to assist promising young tennis players where they can't get parental support? I think the targeted athletes, um, which, you know, are showing signs of being some of the more promising athletes in our state or across the country, uh, we're constantly trying to, to help where we can, uh, whether it's taking taking the kids away for some trips so the parents don't have to worry about it, um, covering some expenses, uh, you know, subsidizing some of those athletes where we can. For us, even, even our programs that we run in the state are, are subsidized. Uh, so if they get into those programs, we, you know, they, they don't pay like the, the, the cost of having a private lesson, it's subsidized by Tennis Australia. And um, I think that's ways of supporting the parents as much just with travel and, and costs and, and then also with trips and some opportunities um, for the kids to go to camps or um, go play interstate tournaments or represent the state or represent Australia in different competitions. So um, there are different levels of support from Tennis Australia and uh, those are for sort of those, those promising athletes coming through. What effect did TCU have on your tennis career? TCU is Texas Christian University, so I wasn't a promising junior. I was, I was, I was okay, um, but I wasn't probably going on to reach the heights of um, winning a junior Wimbledon or a junior French Open. And so I opted to stay in school and, and, and go to university in, in America is once one, I guess, the land of opportunity, uh, the, the university system really coexists with uh, some pretty high performance sporting programs. So I took that opportunity. I got a scholarship to, to TCU University uh, and went over there and, and trained there and, and did my, um, I started a degree over there for two years. Yes, I had to get myself to class, I had to study, I had to train, I had to do all those things every day and to make up my week. And I felt like that, as well as my tennis, uh, I, I guess I matured a little bit and understood what it really did um, make the most of every day and most of my time was really important. And, and I think after doing two years, that sort of set me uh, a really good foundation and platform to, to move on and turn professional and, and that's when I went on and, and, and played the next 15 years as a professional. Thank you Sandin for taking the time to speak with me today at Inspired by Headquarters. I'm sure that this will enlighten young people to further their tennis careers. Well, thanks for having me, it's been a pleasure to have a chat and um, some really good questions and uh, I think goal setting is really important in, in life and, and I think uh, you're doing a terrific job in what you're doing and, and uh, I think you will inspire young girls to dream of what they want to do. So thanks for having us and um, look forward to uh, watching you up in big lights as well and with your dreams and hopefully all your dreams can come true as well. I have a gift for you. Oh, very nice. Oh wow, look at that. That's great. You even got my headband on there. <laughs> I believe you've got two young rising stars ready to hit the court. Would they be up for a match? Uh, they're always up for a match. They're uh, probably our best two 16-year-olds in the country and they train here in Adelaide. So both of them um, really moving towards that pro space and I think they'd always be up for a challenge. So I think you and I could maybe take them on in a game of doubles and see how we go. Okay. Let's get down to Memorial Drive. Edward, Charlotte, come over here. Just want to introduce you to a couple of young girls coming up the ranks in our tennis world. Hello. Hello. I'm Isabella. Hi, I'm Charlotte. And I'm Lucy. Hi. Hi, I'm Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Edward. I'm Lucy. <laughs> Let's hit the court.
You have won four ITF World Tennis Tour Junior titles this year, back to back in Mornington in May and back to back in Playford in September. Thank you, Edwin, for speaking with us on Inspired Time. Thanks for having me. When did you discover tennis? Oh, well, it was really started when I was five years old. Um, I was playing at Holdfast Tennis Club and sometimes in the backyard with my dad and I really started to enjoy the game. I was watching some of the pros at the time and I was really enjoying it and so I just wanted to get out there and keep playing and um, yeah, I've never looked back since. Charlotte Kempinis Poz, you were a wild card recipient for the Australian Open qualifying earlier this year and played Australian Open doubles with Samenia Help and won the ITF World Tennis Junior Singles in Playford in September. Thank you for taking the time to speak with us today on Inspired By. Oh, it's a pleasure, thank you for having me. When did you start playing tennis? I started playing tennis when I was around five. My older brother was playing, so I decided to join in with him and it just went on from there. When did you realise tennis was your passion? Well, probably when I was about 10 years old. I've really, I've always enjoyed the game of tennis, but I really started to get good when I was about 10 years old. Um, I really enjoyed playing with my dad and um, all my club tennis and tournaments, and so that's when I really started to get serious about it and wanted to go somewhere as, and use tennis as a career. When has that journey that you started at five years of age taken you? Um, it's taken me all around the world. Um, I've visited different countries and got a real experience for the cultures I've been to, so yeah. Can you describe your journey from when you started playing at five years of age to your current position today? Well, it's, tennis has really taken me all over the world. Um, I've played in some great places across the globe. Um, it's been a really great journey uh, to see my development from when I first started when I was five years old to, to where I am now. Um, I really feel like I have just keep getting better every day and keep improving um, and that's all that I can ask for myself. So I am really enjoyed this journey. How do you juggle your schooling with your intensive training and tournaments you play in? Um, well, I do online school. So I've got a system where I train in the morning, do school in the afternoon and then train again after that, which has really helped me. Who have been your greatest supporters so far? Uh, definitely my parents. I mean, all the help they've given me and support over the years. Uh, my brother as well, always pushed me to keep, keep getting better. Uh, all my coaches and my grandparents, um, everything they've done for me, I'm really grateful for that. And I'm, Tennis Day have supported me a lot over the years with Santa Stolly. Um, the whole organisation of Tennis Day and Tennis Australia have really helped me uh, through my journey so far. What advice would you give to your nine-year-old self embarking on a professional sporting career? I say stay positive throughout your um, career and just keep going for it. Doesn't matter where it takes you, just as long as you're happy. What experiences have you learned the most from? Well, there's been a few, uh, really. I mean, just the importance of a hard work, work ethic. Um, I mean, there's so many guys around the world that are working so hard every day um, and just love the sport. And so I think that's the most important thing, whether it's taking it on the court or off the court, just the hard work ethic um, and the discipline and determination that goes into sort of playing tennis. Um, I think that can be really used in all aspects of life. Who has encouraged you on your incredible journey to date? Um, definitely my family. They've been there from the beginning. They've taught me everything I know. Um, definitely also my coaches, Tennis SA, Sand and Stolly, everyone that's just been with me from the start. It's been a great journey so far. What experiences have you learnt the most from? Well, earlier this year, I was lucky enough to hit with some of the professionals at the Australian Open. And so I think hitting with Novak Djokovic, Dominic Team, Nick Kyrgios, hitting with them has taught me a lot about uh, my game and how to get improve, how to improve that. Uh, but I think they've also taught me a lot about themselves off the court, um, how to be humble and, and work hard and be disciplined and show resilience. So I think um, hitting with those guys and just learning from them is probably some of my greatest experiences uh, throughout my tennis journey. So I'm really grateful for those, for those guys for giving me this opportunity and um, yeah. What have been your greatest challenges in pursuing your dream? Um, definitely injuries. Um, throughout the years I've had a few difficult injuries that I've had to overcome, but I think I've done well with overcoming them and keeping active while still injured, so I'd say that, yeah. What would you say to young people who would like to move towards a professional sport? Definitely just to enjoy every day of it. I mean, playing a professional sport is is just a dream come true really and so I think the most important part of it is just going out there and having fun and just enjoying every training session, every match, um, no matter what sport it is. Um, yeah, just having a passion for it and believing in yourself is probably the most important things. What is your ultimate goal in tennis? 
Well, I really want to play on the WTA circuit, hopefully do well, um, become, get in the top 10 and become the best player I can be. What has been your most memorable swing of success? I would definitely in early 2020, I was fortunate enough to play in the Australian Open Juniors and in the Adelaide International Qualifying here in Adelaide. Um, and I think I wasn't too successful at those tournaments, but just being able to play against the professionals and um, come close to them and sort of just learn from them and adapt my game to that sort of level of tennis, I think was the most memorable um, sort of couple of tournaments of my career. What players do you look up to? Uh, definitely Ash Barty. She's an Aussie sensation. She's a great um, person to look up to. And a few of the others would be Storm Sanders and Dario Gavrilova. What have been your greatest mentors to date? Uh, well, definitely my fitness coach, Daniel Berberis, and my tennis coach, Sam Wall. Um, they've sort of really been helpful for me in this journey of mine, um, helping me keep on track. Um, Brent McLennan, uh, who I worked with when I was a bit younger, um, really also helped me to understand my game a bit more and, and really adapt to, to try and become a professional. Um, so, but there's a lot of people that have helped me out. And, yeah. Following your dream has taken you all around the world. What is your favourite place? I think anywhere in Europe was really nice. I really like Denmark and probably Croatia. They were really nice places to go and play. What do you enjoy doing in your downtime? I like spending time with family and friends. I don't mind to play a bit of golf as well, um, but I also like to watch AFL and NFL. What's NFL? Uh, it's American football, also known as Gridiron. Um, I'm a big supporter of the Dallas Cowboys, so we're going, going well at the moment. What do you enjoy doing in your downtime? Probably hanging out with my friends when I can and just taking my mind off the court is great. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Emma, for sharing your journey and advice for young people. Uh, thanks for having me and I hope I can inspire someone out there. Thank you very much Charlotte for taking the time to speak with us today. We really appreciate your advice to help young people. Thank you very much for having me.